I'm going to start this video off with a question for you to ponder on before I answer it. How does a company that is hated by everyone keep staying on top of its field? There's other bad game companies, yes. In fact, I'd venture to say that we are currently in a dark age of video games, but that would be a video on its own. Instead, I'm going to focus on the moldy cream of the stale crop that is EA, a company that has been voted worst company in America more than once. We've recently had three big games released by EA in the past month, Madden 21, UFC 4, and NBA 2K21. And the complaints for all three are overwhelming. Madden currently holds the title of worst user-reviewed game on Metacritic, knocking out Blizzard's terrible Warcraft 3 remake that also came out earlier this year. Again, Dark Ages of Gaming. We all know EA is bad, and I don't want to put too much time into specifics, so here's just some bullet points. Each and every sports game is nearly identical to the previous, just copied and pasted. No, really, in Madden 21, they still had Madden 20 logos in the game. The graphics don't really even get improved. Does this look like some next-gen technology here? This is the latest release, but I initially thought this must have been a decade old. There's enough game-breaking bugs to make Bethesda blush. They have taken out multiple features in this games that were around years ago. Some examples of just in UFC 4 include small details like mothguards flying off, post-fight commentary, or intense stare-downs, to the more important features such as back against the cage, which I guess a sports equivalent would be something like removing being able to fake a punt in Madden 21, only more important because back against the cage is a common occurrence in UFC fights. Despite making you pay full price for the games, they still force ads in them. In NBA 2K, they even had unskippable ads. If you want to have ads in the middle of the octagon or in the stands, that's one thing, but to interrupt playing experience is inexcusable. Loot boxes, especially when those loot boxes are a necessity if you want to be competitive. And they essentially reset them every year. So if you were to put hundreds of dollars last year, guess what? You gotta do it all again. These practices don't just exist in the sports games. The Sims 4, a game that is now just over 6 years old, is still missing features that were in the previous games. To truly own the whole of the game, you have to pay over $700 in microtransactions. Speaking of Sims 4, EA's god-awful practices in needlessly making consumer experiences worse, such as always online DRM or the Steam ripoff Origin. Some people have to illegally download the games they purchased in order to be able to play it. I'm not gonna defend piracy for video games, but if you make it so that people can't even play the game, what do you expect? This has gone from bullet points to just angry ranting. What else we got? Milking popular franchises, such as Star Wars. For example, in Battlefront 2, you either pay them money to play Darth Vader, or you spend over 40 hours playing just to unlock that's one character. Yeah, they somewhat fixed it after launch, but it's something that should never have been a thing to begin with. They've also done things like lock true endings to games like Mass Effect. These are just some of the games with never-ending problems. There's plenty of others, like Need for Speed or FIFA, but I think you get the gist. EA's terrible practices have made them a lot of money, and they can wield a lot of power with that money. They can hang on to all those licenses for the sports games, as well as other big franchises. They also have this disgusting habit of buying smaller developers, gutting them, and keeping their IP for themselves. They destroy essentially everything they touch. Remember Dead Space? EA not only killed it, but won't allow anyone else to get the rights to the game. The history of that franchise alone has had many videos made on it. It is because of their unique position of power, and the way they influence the whole of the industry, that they need to be targeted in ways that is not necessary for other developers. Blizzard also seems to destroy everything it touches, but generally deals with its own IP. Nintendo does a lot of anti-consumer stupidity, like when they try to make you pay to stream their games, or the current limited-time-only purchase of their Mario games, but there's still something of an island in the video game industry. At the end of the day, whoever is on top of the industry guides how many others in the industry think. EA didn't invent the loot box system, but they did bring it over to fully priced games and introducing it at launch. With Mass Effect 3 being the first one to do this in 2012. And they have mastered the concept that either you pay a shit ton of money, or you won't be able to compete. Finish the story, or generally have fun. 
then EA takes that money to buy out other game developers who might compete with them, then runs them into the ground and dissolves them, taking their IP for themselves. So I bring it around to the question I asked in the beginning. How does a company that is hated by everyone stay at the top of its field? Well, young necromancer, the core of this problem, the very essence of why things have been getting so bad with EA, their games, and the industry as a whole, is you. You, who complains about the quality of Madden year after year, yet somehow give it increased sales with every new addition. You, who complain about the graphics, the lack of new gameplay features, the constant painful microtransactions, still keep buying these games and giving them your money. With other disasters, like Warcraft 3, no one knew how bad it was going to actually be. And the game had so many people asking for refunds that it began its own set of memes with Warcraft 3 refunded. The people who continue to buy EA games? You've complained about the same problems year after year, knowing damn well what's coming for nearly a decade. You are feeding this machine. Stop it. And I'm not saying stop it for some self-righteous Mother Teresa type of benevolence. I don't actually care about how you spend your time. I'm saying this because of these terrible practices that you keep feeding spread across the industry. And people like me, who can't even recall the last time they touched anything EA related, will end up being poisoned by this. So I'm actually saying this for my sake, and for the sake of the future of this industry. Every year, you get more video games than you can ever possibly play to their fullest. It should be no problem whatsoever to take the bad ones and just say no. Because even if you take away half the big releases every year, you will still have enough gameplay to last you for a long time. On top of that, there's also an endless array of games with near infinite replayability. Pick up a Total War game. By the time you understand all the mechanics and what each unit does, the next installment is coming out. I don't want to make videos like this. I really don't. And I am a huge proponent of leave things alone inside whatever bubble that something exists. I love the Elder Scrolls series, for example. I don't want to play an MMO, so I leave their MMO alone and wait for the next single-player installment. See? Easy. But when you're destroying other developers, combine that with shady and damaging business practices, begin to affect the foundation of all these things I enjoy, namely the entire gaming industry, then I'm going to target your foundations. And those foundations so happen to be the people that endlessly complain about these games, but continue to purchase without even a hint of hesitation. Do you not see the insanity in this? So what can really be done? Honestly? I don't know. Boycott streamers who play any type of EA games? Refuse to play with friends who buy EA games? It's easy for me to say that because, honestly, I don't even have any contact with anyone who plays those type of games. So I can make all the virtue signaling statements that I want. But something should be done beyond merely boycotting EA games. There's other companies, like Blizzard, who I will never touch with a 10-foot pole, but I'm not going to hold anyone's feet to the fire if they play the games. EA is new territory for me in this regard. To be so bad to your industry that you have to think of your interactions with people who in any way support them. Any ideas, comments, criticisms, telling me to kill myself, or whatever else you expect in YouTube comments, you're more than welcome to say them. And as always, by my teeth.